This is Burke's ERLU explanation website right here. This has everything you need to know about the utils, or at least links that will lead you to everything you need. You can download RLBot from right here if you somehow haven't already. But what we're really going to want to focus on, you can either check out the main GitHub page, or you can click here and it will download a zip file. We're going to be focusing on this. Cloning to another repository. We're just going to name this. There we go. And then we're going to hit create repository from template. And uh, this will not go away until you hit refresh. Take that long as you can see it's already done. But now we have everything. In fact, we even have this right here, which you can recognize is actually this. This will have all our links, uh, including this link right here, this all-important link that you should bookmark, is the Wikipedia page. And if you ever have a question about what something does, come here. It has everything, plus explanations for everything. So we come back to here, and now we're just going to clone this repository, and I'll get back to you once I've done that. I have now cloned the repository and I've opened it in my editor of choice. This is Visual Studio Code. And uh, the first couple things that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this readme file and you can see things to delete. Delete CNAME and underscore config.yml. I'm here, hit delete, delete again, and there we go. First thing we're going to do, we are going to name our bot. This bot right now is a bot. Well, let's make this a bot two developed by Mr. Tutorial. And you can change the description as well as the fun fact and the link to GitHub repository. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into GUI.py. This is going to be useful while debugging. Bot going to change this a bot two by Mr. Tutorial. And then we're just going to put our GitHub repo here, just for a little bit of self-promotion. We're also going to change it up here, and you can also come here. This is the default logo. This is very ugly. You're going to want to change it to something that suits your bot, as this will show up in the bot GUI as well as the RL bot GUI. Now that we've got that done, we're going to launch our bot for the first time. In order to do that, we have to add it into RLBot GUI. Now that we have the GUI open, you're just going to click on add and then load folder. And this will pop up a file explorer where you can go and select the folder that your bot is in. In this case, it is right here. And then you will see it pop up in the bot pack, as you can see. Developers, Mr. Tutorial. Now we can just take our bot, throw it in the match against self. Uh, we got orange a bot going for boost. Blue a bot hits it up against the wall. Blue a bot with the pinch. It's like blue a bot going for another touch on the ball. No, he's going for a shot on net. Can orange a bot get back in time? Looks like he can. Can he turn around? No, he can't. Blue a bot scored. What a shot. Now let's get to actually learning how a bot works and make some modifications of our own and actually build a bot from the ground up. For now, I am going to just clear away the initialization function and also the main function so that we have a fresh slate to start with. So, how do we drive towards a target? Well, the easiest way to do this would just be to use the default drive util. And what this takes is it takes an instance of our bot, which we can just pass in with self, as well as the speed that we want to go to the target at. In this case, we'll do 2300. Next, we need to tell this util how far in front or behind and how far to the left or to the right, as well as how far up or down the target is relative to our car. In order to do this, we can use the local location function under self.me, which is a car object representing your car. In here, we can pass the location of the ball in order to make the car drive towards the ball. Okay, so now let's see this bot in action. 
they're just gonna drive straight at it and now that the ball's in the air as you can see they're just going to keep driving right under it then, but once the ball's on the ground they will hit it and that is going to be a common theme as you will soon see although they will drive up the wall as you see when the orange bot was on the wall there it was following it same thing with the blue bot right there However, we can definitely improve on this, so let's head back to our code. Debugging is also one of the core concepts of programming. You know, if you write a program, chances are there are probably going to be bugs. Meaning that you need to squash them. So, VerxDRLU has a number of tools in order to help with this problem. Two of them are the DBG2D as well as the dbg 3d tools the 2d will simply print some text on your screen meanwhile the 3d will actually take that text and make it follow your bot around on the field as you can see with the text that reads stack colon on the bots so let's give this something to debug you know we can put the speed in there 2300 or we can make a variable speed required and do some logic. Let's have it be 2300 if the distance between the ball and our car is greater than 2560, which is about a quarter field. And if we're closer than that, then let's make it a speed of 1400. Now let's just pass the speed required into the dbg 3d function as well as our default drive util. Now let's look at this in game and we should see, yep, see 2300, 1400 and they're probably gonna stick at 1400 because they're so close to the ball. And there they go falling off the ceiling. So what if we don't want to drive at the ball when the ball's up high in the air because we know we can't hit it? For this, let's make a variable target and we're going to set it to the ball's location only if the ball's height is less than 300. Otherwise, let's just drive back to our own net. Now let's change this from the ball location to the target variable. Alright, let's end off this video by watching some gameplay of our bot. As you can see, comes in, and when it's up in the air, they both go back towards their own net, but then once it's low, we should see them driving back towards the ball. Orange bot gets it, and is that in the net? It is! Totally by chance, Orange scores. Look at that. That is beautiful. Here they go, going in for kickoff. Oof. Going back to the net. And now they're coming back around. They're charging in, who's gonna get their first? Orange again. Unfortunately, it's not on net this time. Both bots. Blue gets a piece of it this time. Oof. Look at this. This is so funny to me. You know, this is actually like a half decent strategy, you know? Like, if it's too far up in the air, just drive back. And if it's close enough to the ground, just go get it. Oh, here comes orange. Oh, blue gets it out. Both are heading towards the ball. Orange chips it into blue's end. Orange sticking with it, not anymore. He's heading back towards his own net, so is blue. It looks like blue's finally gonna get a piece of this. Orange, no way. What a shot that was not even planned. 
Well, I think that's a great way to end off this video, guys, with this really simplistic bot that just scored by chance. I'll see you guys in the next one.